That concludes the service. <laughs> Anybody looking for God? Every day. <laughs> Guess who moved? Relocate. Think God relocates? Think God's hiding? God's a trickster? Hiding in the weeds? Or what if we are just, just short of our understanding? That maybe we've discovered God in this many places. In these bright eyes, these happy smiles, this song, this music, this artist, these volunteers, this youth, the no traffic on a Sunday morning. And what about the rest? What about they don't smile at me? Worse, they give me the look. It's a little hard when I'm so in love with you to give you the look. Let me try it. More practice. More practice. Okay. Can you relate? When they give us the look, when that tone of voice comes, when they don't invite us to their party, when they say no to a heartfelt request, when traffic doesn't flow, when we get the termination notice, when we get the diagnosis, when we get the divorce, where's God in all that? So if we've discovered God in 90% of our life, high five. You may ascend this afternoon. <laughs> the 10% where we lack understanding, the 10%, 20%, whatever it is, the percentage where we have not yet discovered God, not yet realized God in all that is, is where 100% of our pain is. 100% where the fear, the terror, the worry, the panic, the despair, the loneliness, the isolation, the everything that we don't, when we're sane, we don't want to experience. So the 10% that's left. So get a sense of that this morning, that even though you can't understand how God is there, or you can't see, really see God is there, maybe I can't even experience yet that God is there, even in that, what I don't see, what I cannot accept, what I absolutely do not condone, that possibly God is there. Even though I cannot see it yet, even though I have not experienced this yet, that I'm going to hold my mind open, my heart open, to possibly, even in that pain, terror, panic, fear, worry, doubt, God is here. God is there also. And then through our practices, prayer and meditation, the basics of unity, what unity was founded on, what still survives and thrives unity, the very core of that, to pray that way, to pray affirmatively. God is in this. God is. There is one power and one presence in all the universe. It is God. And then it is going to be whatever I make it up to be. So I will create my experience from what I call it. So then they don't invite me to the party and I call it 
disrespect. What will I experience? So who caused that? This is good news. <laughs> so then as I am caused, then I name it a thing. The very second I name it a thing, I experience the thing. So I name it hate. I name it disrespect. I name it um, abandonment. I name it rejection. The very second I name it, I've given it meaning. And then I will experience in accordance with the meaning I've made. So then there's real power in this. Then I can then shift my own experience. I can shift the experience I'm in at any minute that I'm willing to look at the thought that caused the effect. What thought caused this? God is all that is. I am as that. I am one with that. It is the source of me. It is breathing me. It is thinking me. It is directing me. So I then don't have a life, actually. Life has me. Now this will be frightening or freeing. <laughs> so then through prayer and meditation, I align with this as reality. And especially when I'm scared, especially when I'm panicked, especially when I'm bewildered, to use these old, tried and tested practices of prayer and meditation to come back to breath, to being breathed, and to begin again. And then the juicy part to live it out. To live it out. And to live it out loud. To be that light. To be that center. To be that peace. To be that aware. To be the understanding. To be God expressing here. To bring heaven to earth. To make heavenly experience here, no waiting for that, not a place to go, an experience to have. It is an experience to have heaven here now. Anytime I can catch what's causing the stress and the distress and flip it around. Look again. Take down this old, archaic framework of good and bad, good and evil, and then us new thought folks think we really recreated something wonderful. Like, oh, we do not believe in good and evil. No, no, we do not <laughs> believe. We do not believe like that. We believe in positive and negative. <laughs> it's the same frame. <laughs> The same old archaic framework with purple painted on it. <laughs> like we recreated something. Like, no, the paradigm is the same. That says, if they like me, it's good. When they don't like me, it's bad, bad, bad. So then I've created that versus that some will like me, period. That this power of this period may serve as your liberation. The power of a period. Some will like me, period. Some won't. Period. Have you noticed? Reality. My greatest spiritual lesson of all time so far SW, SW, SW. Some will, some won't. So what? <laughs> <laughs> and the so what has such power because then some will like me, some won't. So what am I going to do in this interaction? 
So what am I going to show up as in this interaction? What am I going to show up as in this sadness, in this disappointment, where I'd naturally be the same people would be naturally sad if they don't get what they want. How am I going to be in the sadness? How am I going to be in this disappointment? All the power in the universe is right there. Available to me. At any time, I can self-reference, self-realize, instead of other realize. So what they do belongs to them. You're quick. <laughs> what they do belongs to them. Who they invite belongs to them. Who they like belongs to them. Who they don't like belongs to them. And it's shifting like the wind. So they like me, they don't. It's like, oh, Martha, you're just dear. It's like, oh, Martha, you're the devil. It's like, I know, you should live with me. <laughs> That's very astute. I'm, <laughs> I'm just dear when you're getting what you want from me. I'm the devil when you're not getting what you want from me. It is not mysterious. <laughs> when it's going my way, all is well. All is well. And then us spiritual types are running around like this is us, our message to the world. All is well. All is well. It's all well, tell your face. <laughs> it hasn't caught up. <laughs> so yes, it's an affirmation. Yes, it's a possibility. And I have not realized it yet. I have not realized yet that it is in the absolute all good. And back home here at the ranch, <laughs> in the third dimension, in the physical, with these knuckleheads, is it all good? Is it true that it's all good? So the day we can live it out, then we'll speak about that. Versus, it is what it is. And sometimes I experience it as good, and sometimes I experience it as not so much. So now get a sense that you, right now, in these seats, this very moment, this very day, this very second, is the second you have lived for your whole life. Who knew it would be some hillbilly from Kentucky? <laughs> there she stands, and it's the day of my awakening. It's the day of my transformation. That in the very seat you're in, this morning, this now, you transform. You're no longer under the belief, under the belief system, under the BS <laughs> of all those myths. Like people should be kind. Traffic should flow. <laughs> Marriage is forever. <laughs> Those of you laughing have discovered the falseness of that. <laughs> so what if you could understand that they're myths? They're not problems. They're myths. They're false. False ideas. False notions. False. They're, then they become, if I don't catch it, false idols. Things I worship. It becomes my religion. <laughs> People should be kind. Now, let's get real honest. We'll call this part True Confessions. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> How do you react and treat people when you're holding the belief that they should be kind and they're not? Tell me. Righteously. Judgmental. Judgmentally. Unkindly. Unkindly. Angrily. Angrily. Victimly. Victimly. <laughs> Sarcastically. Sarca thank you, honey. Sarcastically. <laughs> separated. We're separated from them. We cast them out. We withhold love from them. I'm a mind reader. 
<laughs> Guess how I know your mind? Same. Loco. <laughs> so we withhold love from them. We isolate from them. We shut down from them. We gossip from them. Treat them angrily, righteously, victimly. While we're preaching, you should be kind. It gets funnier and funnier. <laughs> So we're perpetuating in the world the very thing we claim we don't want in the world. Mm. Unkindness. So we're singing kindness and praying kindness and living out unkindness. Innocently until today. <laughs> Innocently until we see another way. And you know, then to know something and then not do that something is the same as not knowing. To know there's another way and not live another way is the same as I don't know another way. Blind. So who would you be in the face of unkindness if you weren't under the spell that they should be kind? Kind. Kind. Kinder. Kind. Kinder. Compassionate. Who else? Keep going. Get a sense of how you would be in the face of unkindness. Loving. More loving, calm, more accepting, calmer, patient, more patient, more peaceful, more peaceful. More accepting. That leaves us more accepting. More joyful. Now these are folks that were in the workshop <laughs> Friday and Saturday. We got a fast track to this Friday and Saturday that felt like having surgery to some of them. And they did it. Look how look how bright they are. If you were at the workshop, raise your hand or stand up. Look at this. Half of this congregation committed Friday night and Saturday to letting me torment them. <laughs> it's outstanding leadership you have here. Outstanding. So who would you be if now the thought's still going to come to you? She should be kind. She should be kind. She should be kind. Kind. She should be kind. He should be kind. Kids should be kind. Bosses should be kind. They should be kind. So the thoughts are still going to come. What if they had no effect on you? If you understood they're just thoughts. Who would you be in the face of what you called previously called unkind? If there was no should in there. If you weren't under the myth that people should always be kind. See if you can give an answer to it. And better than answer, see if you can get an embodiment of it. Who you would be. Close your eyes if it helps. Who you would be in the face of something unkind or an unkind action, an unkind person. If you were not judging it as unkind. Peace. See if you can get a sense of that in your body. Free. Freer. Get a sense of that in your body. Whole. More whole. Not impacted. Holy. Not impacted by it. I'd be unmoved. I would know where they begin and end and where I begin and end. Grounded. Grounded. Healed. Balanced. Healed. Get a sense of it. I think it's possible. So this is the effect of just one little thought. And the mighty effect of coming out from under its spell. Of questioning it instead of believing it. So nothing creates my experience until I believe it. 
No thought can harm me. No thought can stress me. Only and to the degree that I believe it. Guess who's holding your key? You remember last year? When I was here, I reminded you you are holding your own key. So the prison we're in is a prison of mind, a prison of mental constructs, a prison of mythical, outdated, archaic, false systems, BS. And the door's wide open. The door to this prison is wide open. And I hold the key for me, and you hold the key for you. So turn to somebody that's sitting by you and tell them, I hold the key. I have the key. I have the key. Self-managing, 
self-regulated. So when anxiety comes up, I pause and restore myself. Will anxiety come up? You bet. You've got a pulse. As long as we have a pulse, we have these triggers and an eight, knee-jerk, instinctual reactivity. And the capacity to regulate. Cognition. We seldom ever access. <laughs> because we're reactive. In the knee-jerk. In the, in the little pea-sized brain that's in common with lizards. <laughs> and snakes. You get a sense of being intentional. So regardless of what they do, how am I going to be? Of being more light shedding, even in dark places. My role is to be light shedding here especially in dark places, to be the light I want to see in the world. To be resilient, get a sense of this in your body, the resilience you already have. Look at what you've already lived through. And the resilience that carried you through that, the resilience that's yours now, right here. Now get a sense of that we don't know what's coming up the road, but I know whatever comes up the road, I'm equipped for it. Amen. Get a sense of that. I don't even, I don't know what it is, but I know I'm equipped for it. How do I know I'm equipped for it? Then I wouldn't be in it if I wasn't equipped for it. Just like you were equipped for everything you already came through. Did you like it? No. No. <laughs> Heck no. Would you want to do it again? Heck no. And were you equipped for it? Yeah. Yep. You got through it. Not only survived it, but thrived from it. Not only survived, thrived. You learned from it. You transformed from it. It taught you how to do it or how not to do it. So there was deep salvation in it of how to do it and how not to do it, and me too. I'm not immune from this, by the way. The day I get immune from this, you will not see me. <laughs> <laughs> I will have ascended. I have so many videos it. It'll, it'll free up all of our financial woes. <laughs> Take responsibility for self. Just any of those things. So what to do and how to do it. 30 tried and true ways on how to apply this. And then I broaden my view of God. <laughs> Make a fist and look through it. And that's where God is right now. Now imagine just opening it a little and then a little more. And then what if I was willing to find God literally in all things, in all situations, and that was what my, was motivating me to do that. So we begin again today. I absolutely love you and can't help it. I'm so delighted to serve here with you. Um, my mother got a diagnosis in March from three kind of experts that are unrelated that said she will live three to six months. And I cleared my schedule for that time period all but Easter and this trip because I was guided not to cancel it, to be here with you. So I'm here in service with you. I'm here in service to myself. I'm here in service to God. And I'm in service to a new possibility. A new way of being in the world. And my mission in life is to serve those who serve. So I naturally believe.
that it's you. And that I'm here on purpose, and so are you. So I appreciate your understanding with me leaving early today. It gets me home today instead of tomorrow night on a red eye, flying all night. And if you want to contact me, it's right on the website, MarthaCreed.com. So if I can serve you in any way, be in touch with me. And it would support me when the service closes today. I would normally hang around and hug and kiss and carry on. So I want you to receive a hug right now. So imagine me hugging you. And to receive that all the way through your being. And I receive your hug. And that it is something beyond the physical in the physical and beyond that. And I'll be blessing you all along your way here in this ministry and each of you in your lives. And if there's a way I can support you, get in touch with me.